In this video, I'm going to show you how to take apart the AutoStar controller for the ETX telescopes and either replace a display or fix some sticky button keys. First thing you'll do, and I've already done this, is just take out the four screws on the back. There's two on the bottom, two up top. They're pretty tiny little screws, so be careful, don't lose those. And then you just can kind of slide your fingernail in the crack there and gently pry it open. There is a little piece that you'll see that fell out. This is the lens for the very front, and I'll show you how to easily slide that back in afterwards. So you take this apart, and the back part will just come off, and you can set that aside. So then what you want to do is, this is the display ribbon cable. There are two variations of that. This is a 14 pin, meaning there's 14 lines supplying uh, the display. And you'll want to, the other ones have 24 pins. So if you ever need to replace that, make sure you get the correct one. The problem with these displays is that they use a printed carbon ink on the cable. So you just have to slide little tabs on this connector. This little plastic connector there, I just kind of push these tabs up a little bit. Then you can slide out the cable. So kind of remember what the orientation of the cable is. This one loops down and the contacts are on the bottom, so the contacts slide in facing down. This is the carbon ink I was telling you about on the back. This is actually in really good shape still, so this display works fine. So once the display is disconnected, you can carefully just pull off the back of the panel. If you had to replace, if you were gonna just replace the display, uh, the display is kind of glued in a little bit around the edges here. You just take a screwdriver and gently pry that out and take the display out, and then you drop another one in there, put it back through there, reconnect it, and you're good to go. Now this one I'm working on has some buttons that stick. So on the flip side of this are all the button contacts. So all of these little, on each side of these white parts, there's, so you can see it, these little kind of squiggly lines on each side there. Those are the contacts for the back of the button pad. So on each side of there, lines up with the little black parts on the button. So what you wanna do first is get some rubbing alcohol, dip it in a Q-tip, and you want to gently clean off all those silver areas on each side of the raised white part. I've already cleaned this one off and it's dry. So once you do that, and I went ahead and cleaned the back of this too. I don't know if you're supposed to, but I just made sure that was clean. And then you want to get, this is the repair pad from Buttonworks. That's B-U-T-T-O-N-W-O-R-X. So they sell this little repair button kit and they say to carefully peel off the back so I'm kind of doing this for the first time here I see this is maybe the trickiest part is just getting it started to peel off I will probably edit this video to remove this time I'm taking to do that Yeah, they said it might be a little tricky to get the back part started. And it's made of like three layers. So they say make sure you only take it off the back protector part. Okay, so I got it started on the corner there. Then you just carefully peel the backing off. off it's completely off then you want to carefully the sticky side goes down over the contacts you kind of line that up and they say not to really press on it just kind of get it on there so it's kind of sitting on there and it's all lined up on there put your key pad, keypad back on there that goes back upside down on there Get the ribbon cable snaked up through there. All right, so you can kind of make sure your buttons are all sticking through the housing. Get your display cable put back in. It goes underneath, at least on this one, it goes underneath the little sliding connector plate. Okay, that is in. And you put your two halves back together. And then before you 
totally pushed down on the top half. This little red thing has a narrower, little thin part on the end there. And that goes in, kind of tucked in underneath there. So it kind of slides in the top and the bottom just kind of presses in and it snaps into place. So once you get it all snapped into place, then you would replace your four screws and you're all set. Hope that helps you out.